I recently had the opportunity to interview Patrick Liu, the CEO of HSR. Patrick is one of Asia's most sought-after speakers. He has spoken to audiences in over 60 countries. In this interview, I asked him questions about why he went into real estate, how he got so good at public speaking, and what a day in his life is like. How did you decide to go into real estate? <laughs> That's a very good question. I am an accidental entrepreneur. In a sense that when I was 17 years old, I wanted to be a social worker. I wanted to go out there and uh, touch people's lives and help people to live a better life and make our world a better place to live in. But for some reason, uh, you know, I didn't do it. And one of the reasons was uh, some of my mentors, my counselor told me, go out to the real world and work first. And then when you have real life experience, you'll be in a better position to help other people. And uh, so I said, what's the best way to get the most amount of experience in the shortest possible time? And so they say, go into the business world, start as a salesperson, which is what I did. And in the process of uh, going to the corporate world, I started to climb the corporate ladder. And in 1992, I had a wake up call. I was standing uh, in my office, I was working uh, long hours, it was about 10 plus in the evening. I was looking out of the window, looking at the reclaimed land or the, 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 the land that the government was reclaiming, was reclaiming to become what is today known as Marina Bay. I had a wake up call. I realized I don't have a life. I may be making quite good money. I may be doing quite well in the corporate world, but I don't have a life. And so I decided to sack my boss. And while walking around town, I asked myself, what should I do? I chanced upon two very interesting reports. The first report is uh, done by the previous University of Singapore. It's a salary survey and they found it was very shocking to me to discover that some of the top income earners are real estate professionals. And then there was another survey around the same time by Straits Time about millionaires in Singapore. I discovered that 90% of all millionaires became millionaires directly and directly because of real estate. So when I did my survey, I had a shocking discovery. I discovered that the real estate industry at a point in time, the standard was very, very low. So here you have uh, an opportunity to make a lot of money, but yet the standard is very, very low. I saw one huge, big words in multicolor hue blasting at me, and the word is opportunity. And that's how I jumped into the real estate world. And I'm thankful because through uh, serving uh, as a servant leader in the real estate world, I've been able to achieve uh, the four freedoms that I think most of us are looking for. First of all, money freedom, to have uh, enough money to live a good life, to have time freedom, to have the time in the world to do meaningful things, to have all the money in the world to, and have all the time in the world to spend it, to have all the time in the world to spend the money that you earn. And the third freedom is what I call lifestyle freedom. I think through real estate, I have the opportunity to make the money, have the time to do what I want to do, achieve what I want to achieve, enjoy whatever I want to achieve. But the most important freedom is what I call contribution freedom. I think now I have uh, a greater latitude of resources, whether it's in terms of time, money, energy, and all other resources to donate time, talent, treasure, I've always said that I'm not a professional speaker, neither am I a professional trainer, nor am I a professional communicator. I do this as part of uh, the skills I need to be a human. I do this as part of the skills I need to be a servant leader, to be an entrepreneur. And uh, I've not gone through formal training in speaking. I probably attended some classes here and there. But I've learned a long time ago a few things that are useful. Number one is when I have the privilege and the honor to share with a group of people, it's not about me, it's about them. And when I'm less sensitive about myself, when I'm less conscious about myself, you know, I come across as being real, as being natural, and I connect better with my audience. And when I lose that sense of self-consciousness, I think people will take me even more seriously at the same time. And so before I get up to the stage or stand before a crowd or stand before a rostrum, 
I would whisper a prayer to our Creator and ask our Creator to use me as a, a conduit to be able to channel His message, the most vital important message to the audience. And I have this strange experience all the time. I can prepare a speech, but when I quieten my heart and my mind and you know, allow myself to be the conduit, somehow I'll hear that still small gentle voice. And sometimes the still small gentle voice will take me off tangent from my prepared speech. And very often that is the most important message for the audience. And so by doing that, uh, the people who have listened to me find me a very amiable, very approachable uh, person. They find me like their friend next door. And so to me, it's not about being a speaker or trainer or being a communicator. It's about being your friend. It's about being a friend who cares and is absolutely concerned about you. And it's about being a friend that wants the best for you. What is a day in the life of Patrick Liu like? What sort of success habits do you follow throughout the day? Let me start from the morning. Uh, the first thing I do in the morning is to do what I call the power walk. And I've been teaching the concept of the power walk uh, to my colleagues, to people all over the world literally. Every morning I bring my, walk, my dog for a walk. Today of course my dog bring me for a walk. And in the process of doing what I call the power walk, the first thing I do is I learn to be thankful and grateful for my life. I thank our Creator for all the wonderful things He has surrounded me with. And the truth of the matter is, if we wake up in the morning and say, how come my life is so terrible? You see a lot of terrible things. But when you wake up in the morning and say, how come my life is so wonderful? You will be amazed and in awe about all the wonderful things that our Creator has given to you. And then secondly, what I do is that I will review what I've done the day before. I will go through uh, the various experiences to see what lessons I can learn to make me a better person. Then I will try and visualize my long-term vision. And I visualize them in terms of five senses. I want to be able to see my vision clearly, smell it clearly, taste it clearly, uh, feel it clearly, and, uh, and hear it clearly. And uh, then I will look at how I can do what I, need, what I need to do on that day itself to fulfill my vision. And not only do I plan what I do, the most important thing, the second most important thing, the third most important thing, I will visualize what I want to do for the day itself. And every now and then, when my dog would stop and uh, communicate you know, his emails, emails, uh, I will also stop and then learn to steal my heart and my mind and learn to appreciate the beauty and wonders. And if you and I learn to stop, there are wonderful things to look at. Looking at clouds, looking at trees, flowers. Even in the worst rubbish bin, I will find interesting insects, interesting things, you know, to appreciate and uh, to be in awe of. And then, of course, uh, at the end of the morning walk, uh, I will uh, do my exercise. I will do deep breathing uh, exercises and I also will warm up my vocal cord so that uh, you know, I can get myself ready for a day and make sure I'm totally charged up you know, to welcome a new day. And then in, when I go back to work, when I go to work, I have a to-do list to make sure I do the A list first, the most important thing, followed by the B and then the C. And I will try to spend time to walk around the office and to touch base with my people, to connect my people, to ensure they know that I'm their friend, that I love them. And then the, before I go for my lunch, I make sure I decide what I want to eat. I have this theory, if I go to the food court, I will be tempted and I may fall into temptation eat the wrong food. So I make sure I choose the food that I want to eat before I go uh, to the food court. And then after lunch, I will do my uh, power nap. I do about two or three power naps in a day. I can sleep at a count of 10. And I teach people how to sleep at a count of 10. And I do about 10 to 15 minutes of power nap. And I find it very, very rejuvenating because after my sleep, I will feel like I'm starting a new day all over again. In the evening, I try to uh, do exercise. I have got personal coaches. I sign up for classes. Uh, I do different things to, to ensure that I recreate my body. So I feel that leisure and recreation is not part of my personal life and apart from my working life. I feel that leisure and creation should be part and parcel of my working life. 
in the evening, I spend time with my family. I do uh, reading. I love my books. I spend a lot of time uh, reflecting, and I spend a lot of time crafting uh, my reflection. And for those of you who are interested, I post some of these reflections on my Facebook.